making a Stuart model steam plant. This one is part 55, machining the Stuart 504 boiler base clamps. I showed the pieces of metal I was going to use for the base clamps in an earlier episode, along with an explanation why I was using them. I'll repeat that explanation. Once the steam plant is completely finished and working, it will be dismantled and shipped in component parts to the USA. The 504 boiler and its base will be all part of one unit, which also includes the gas burner. Here I'm using some marking out fluid to make a nice blue colour on the brass, so when I scribe a line on it, I'll be able to see it. It's Thursday the 24th of February 2022, which will go down in history as the day that Russia invaded Ukraine. It reminds me of a term used by the great LBSC who wrote for Model Engineer many years ago when he would refer to periods of bloodshed and destruction. And here we go again. I never discuss religion or politics because there's no point. And now I will get on with the job. I'm actually using a metric micrometer because this steel is 3 millimeters thick. And in the previous clip, I cut a piece of sheet metal, which is also 3 millimeters thick, into a handy length to use as a gauge. You may be wondering why I'm using such a small milling cutter. The answer to that is it was already in the machine, and if I changed the cutter for a larger one, then all I would be showing is one or two passes with the milling cutter. By using a smaller cutter, it takes slightly longer. This allows me to explain what I'm doing as I do it. Just don't forget, this is a tutorial. I'm doing things wrong in this video on purpose. I'm moving the milling cutter in the wrong direction. A milling cutter should always move towards the work. This is moving away from it. If there's any backlash on the milling machine table, owing to the screw being worn or the nut being worn, then you may have a problem. But generally speaking, not with a piece of brass like this and not with a milling cutter of this size which is another reason for using the smaller milling cutter. I generally have the clamps slightly nipped up on this table and this makes winding the handle which moves the table a little bit more difficult. But I'll put it down to exercise. The problem is though, it's only exercise of my right arm and if that gets muscly, it's going to look a bit odd with one normal arm and one muscly arm. Having said that though, I once met a plasterer who was just like that he spent many years plastering with his right arm, and his right arm was much bigger physically than his left one. At least I assume it was the plastering that was doing that. I soon realised that I'd made a mistake. I have insufficient packings underneath the piece of metal, and if I carry on in this position, the milling cutter will hit the jaws of the vise. So, I put a piece of mahogany in place. Then, as you can see, I tap the part into position with a soft hammer to make sure it was level. A lot of the time I use pieces of hardwood as packing. I don't have any parallels. Some viewers write in and say, I'm really surprised that you don't have any parallels. Well, I'm really surprised that I don't have a better milling machine. But don't forget, these are tutorials for beginners. Some of the things that I do are not really suitable for raw beginners, but anybody with a small home workshop should get some benefit from watching these videos. I have three fairly old metalworking lathes in my workshop. Why three lathes? Well, they're all different sizes. I have a large smart and brown lathe, not with a massive centre height, but it's very robust. Then I have a small Boxford lathe and an even smaller Myford lathe. Generally speaking, I only use the smart and brown lathe for larger jobs. Because these are tutorials, most people don't have lathes of that size, so I try and avoid it or maybe show how I can do a job on a larger part on a small lathe. I was talking to a man in Scotland called Ronnie Mall. Ronnie Mall's engineering has to be seen to be believed. And I was talking to him a while ago about turning large parts on small equipment. And Ronnie explained that he turned an 18 inch flywheel from a Stuart Major Beam engine in his milling machine. And if you think about it, it's very feasible. With the flywheel casting fastened to the spindle and a tool holder fitted with a lathe tool bolted to the table, you can see what's going to happen. It's very much like a lathe, but stood on its end. It's certainly something to think about. I might give that a try in a later video. Here are the two pieces of brass once I'd machined them in the milling machine. In this image, owing to camera distortion, they look a bit different, but they're not, they're both the same. 
and in this clip I'm making sure that the recesses are the same depth on both of them. Here you see how they're going to work in the steam plant. There will be one at each end of the boiler steel mounting base. I machine both of these pieces of brass slightly deeper than 3mm because I need to leave some space for a packing underneath. This steel plate boiler base will be painted and I don't want the paintwork to be damaged by the clamps so I'm going to fit a piece of gasket material underneath each of the clamps actually stuck to them and cut to size obviously and this should hopefully prevent the clamps from scratching the paint on the metal base. The time has come for a marking out frenzy so I can drill some holes to mount these brass parts onto the baseboard. The holes in these pieces of brass are going to be drilled half an inch in from each end and the job starts by making sure that the holes are in the right place. I'm using a centre drill to very lightly make an impression in the correct place on the brass. Using a centre drill is a good idea because if you get it wrong you can actually move the position before you commit yourself to drilling it further down. After making the initial small impression on each of the marks and double checking that they were in the right place then I went further through with the drill. I do not recommend holding any metal parts with your fingers when you're drilling holes in the pieces of metal because if the drill grabs the piece of metal will spin round and I'm going to show you this very shortly. It's unlikely to spin round with a centre drill unless you put a lot of pressure on and you're incredibly clumsy. After the centre drilling I drilled out each of the holes using a 964 drill, watch this. You may be wondering how I managed to do this without injuring myself, well it's quite simple. Just as the drill was about to break through I did two things. I let go of the piece of brass first and then put a bit more pressure on the drill bit which spun the whole part around and by doing it in that order I avoided injury. The next part of the job is to enlarge the hole to 5.30 seconds of an inch. These are very small drills by the way. But the same thing applies even now. Do not hold the metal parts in your fingers when you're using a drill press. There's less chance of the thing spinning round because I'm just enlarging the holes, but it has been known. It would have been a much more sensible idea right from the beginning to fit a smaller length of wood in the drilling machine's machine vise just below the level of the jaws. That way the piece of metal couldn't spin round. It's often a great idea to think through the job before you actually start doing it. Here are the finished clamps after I rounded them off using my belt sander. Both of these clamps are different sizes to accommodate the holes in the boiler plates. But because I drilled the holes half an inch in from the edge of both of the clamps, it's not so obvious. And that concludes this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.